won the second game. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I picked in. a couple losses in here, but I've been winning most of my games lately. <clears throat> so it was hard bad. to find. Yeah, no, it's it's I've noticed I've I've definitely noticed an improvement in my play in the last two weeks for well, sure. I see you starting to develop the habits of a prophylactic master. That's the idea, it's all. Yeah. That is the idea, my friend. Yeah. They, a true prophylaxis master knows no losing. So here, d4 on the board. You're playing white. I'm looking yes. from the... It's funny because I'm not sure where, which side <clears throat> I'm seeing. Yeah, I see the white <clears throat> side. And let me quickly check if my viewers also see the white side. Yeah, okay. So d4. You're playing white. D five, C four. Let me let me ask you. Some, let me ask you something before yeah. we get into the analysis here. Yeah. Do you would you recommend uh, learning like different? Like I love D four. I just I'm just way more comfortable playing. But but would you recommend learning more E four openings so as to prepare how to respond to them from the block side, or just is it better to have a wealth of knowledge, or do you think it's better just to stick with the openings that you know when so, you're when you're when you're that's just. That's a great question. Coming, I have no idea because it takes a lot of a lot of uh, philosophy uh, to to decide how to teach beginners and how to improve faster as a starting chess player from opening point of view. And from my perspective, I will not give you the let's say a concrete answer, but I'll say something general that you would want the opening to be the as least of an obstacle as possible for your improvement because uh, even if, if your brain works fine and you like the game and you keep getting lost positions then it, it sucks and you don't want it to happen okay All and, right. uh, i don't know how to which openings are are likely to avoid uh to avoid these kind of traps more but uh, i heard carlson in his own YouTube channel, mentioning in a Q&A uh, video that uh, a good idea for beginners, uh, even at higher levels, but to people who want to improve without too much theory, is to play knight f3, g3, bishop g2, castles, and then see, take it from just there. Always, just always fianchetta the bishop? Yeah. Uh, as oh, it, okay. I have to mention that when I grew up, I, I almost never uh, did a fianchetto. I always played e4 and... Uh, most of the chess players growing up on the Soviet chess school principles, so to speak, they play this type of openings, yeah. like uh, Italian, like you we saw in both of the games so far, and e4, e5, knight f3, <laughs> then the bishop goes to the center, both of them actually, and it's considered to be the classical way, but I like the Carlsen's advice to avoid theory, just simply play knight f3 and take it, uh, like you have already like uh, at least like I don't know, six safe moves, and then you, you can take it. Uh, and it's very flexible, so you can develop a lot of uh, practical skills. I think Fisher used to fianchetto his bishop a lot, because I remember going through some of his old games. It was very popular seeing... like 50 years ago to, to play knight f3 and g3 on the first uh, few moves. I have no idea why, but uh, it was just uh, how, like, I think it's basically fashion. There's no explanation. Just people okay. liked it more. And uh, yeah, I think for beginners, it's a good idea to just play it. But with black, it becomes more tricky because there is no universal way to play against e4 or d4. You just have to study one relatively narrow and simple opening and try to survive your way uh, to the middle game. And then, you know, if try to apply the questions. I think this is sure. the key. Yeah. Okay. Solve tactics and apply the questions as long as you survive the openings. How to survive? Uh, there are tons of videos for beginners. I'm not an expert, but I hope to become one day, sooner or later. So I used to, um, yeah. I, when when I was first learning, I would read a lot of books on, mm -hmm. on openings and stuff like that. And some people that, some of the authors that would write these books on openings would say, if you're just getting into chess, it's probably better that you study the end game before you study the opening. Well, you get the these are the older books, I think, because now everyone knows openings and if, the end game is not going to help you if you're getting uh, smashed in the opening. So yep, I agree. I agree. But, I never did it. I was like, nah, I'm going to study no, no. the opening. Opening tactics, those are the two factors. And they, they're also more rewarding. The end games are 
like the equivalent of maybe reading history books yeah i mean hey, from hey, from the educational point of view it sounds like the more uh higher education kind of thing and oh, yeah. okay right. okay it's important well, but uh it's uh like not i mean you will not reach the end game if you don't survive the opening so yeah yeah i'm with you on that one and just to quickly mention from the black point of view uh I remember as growing up, I just learned one system and uh, against E4, against D4, and I just played it all the time. And uh, I don't know, I had one book on each of them, and I just looked through the variations after my games to, to and learned uh, after each game like one particular line. So yeah. it, it doesn't matter. Just pick one opening that you like and uh, try to avoid theory as much as possible. Okay. okay so yeah so with white however okay I, I don't think your level is too basic by now and you want to also fight for the advantage with white yeah you don't you don't just want to survive so here c4 is the the right way let's say the, the most principled way i call it to to fight you already put pressure. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a gambit, but it's not like too risky of a gambit. It's not like the king's gambit. It's, you know, it's it doesn't a gambit get that bad. doesn't lose a pawn forever. Right. You yeah. get it back. So it's like uh, just by, by name, it's a gambit, but it's it doesn't have the spirit of attacking uh, with, uh, with material losses. So uh, after c4, he chose to take the pawn. And... Actually, knight c3 is not the most precise way. I think the easiest way to to proceed is simply to play e3 if you don't want to deal with too much theory and simply to take it back later. And so what happens if you... Now, if you push e3, why wouldn't he just fortify with b5? Well, I'm glad you asked. So now you go a4. The only move is c6. Because a6, uh, there is a pin on the a file, yeah? Yeah. So yep, c6 yep. is the only way to defend. And now <clears throat> the the most, uh, let's call it, uh, educated way to, to respond is to take. And uh, here there is a nice little move that maybe you can spot. All right, let me, let me think about this. Um... <clears throat> A nice little move that you can spot. I don't know, man. You, I, don't, I can't see it. What are, you, what are you looking at here? Okay, I will not tell you. <laughs> You're not going to tell me? Uh, <laughs> why not? I don't know. I would just play knight c3 at this point. It's a good move. Uh, and uh, probably still slightly better for white. But let's. I'll just give you a, slight, a small clue. Um... Look at which pieces of his are hanging. Oh, think punishing yeah. is all right, all right. Queen, queen, queen to f3 exactly. looks pretty good here. Exactly. So now the rook is trapped and uh, he's gonna lose. Oh, so oh my god, I've, I've been playing knight c3 instead of e4 for my whole chess career, so this just changes everything. It's funny that you so. said e4 because e4 here is considered to be the best move theoretically, not e3, but uh, it's far more complicated. So yeah, uh -huh. e3... Yeah, I would, I would have pushed e4. That's my initial instinct. Yeah, e4 is the best move, but uh, it involves a lot of complications. So for, for our yeah. sake, just play e3, take the pawn and keep your development. And uh, yeah, b5 fails. And even regardless to this particular reason, um, let's just... Let's just add knight f3, knight f6 to the mix, just so that white will not have this this uh, trick. Still, white can get the pawn back by playing b3, because if you take on b3, I can take on b5 with check, and then take on right. b3 later. So b3 is okay. the most yeah, yeah. typical move. So this is this looks move. this looks much more sh much sharper than what I'm used to playing with this opening. So that's good. I'm yeah. learning something today. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you mean much more direct. Actually, knight c3 will result in what I call sharper positions, more complicated positions. Yeah, but okay. this is very straightforward, getting the pawn back and and uh, you're going to have a lot of, uh, uh, a lot less headaches, let's call it this way. So knight I guess I just realized that I'm not really quite sure what sharp means in relation to chess. In my uh, mind, I well, guess it just meant like... 
I don't think there is an objective meaning. It's just what people like to call it. And in ch- in chess, uh, in the chess community, when they say sharp, they mean uh, like a, a position that's unbalanced, where pieces are hanging and so on. And uh, okay, yeah, I, I've been using it wrong this whole time. Then I guess. yeah, but for example, in my language, they don't use this word. They do. They use uh, another word for it. Yeah, they use the the word uh, spicy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Spice is good too. Yeah. I like it. So knight c3, uh, knight f6, bishop f4. You don't care about the pawn. You want to develop. This is definitely not bad. And uh, playing it in a gambit style. So knight c6. I don't like uh, this particular move as much. I think for black it would be more logical to play e6. And uh, maybe c5 later, yeah, and only then yeah. c6 to. That's what pressure. I normally run into. That's what I normally run into from exactly. the. Uh, yes, so knight c6, okay, is a good move, uh, but uh, but it uh, blocks the pawn. So after you defend d4, uh, uh, he will be a little bit awkward with this knight. So now he played e6. You took the pawn back. Everything is normal. Bishop b4. Knight e2 is okay. I'd prefer to play knight f3 still to to be more in more centralized. And uh, did I play knight e2? Actually, you know, no. I like knight e2 more because knight f3 has knight d5 and slightly unpleasant. Yeah. yeah. So knight e2 is a good idea. Now, if knight d5, you simply retreat with the bishop and you castle on the next move. Yeah. So knight e2 is good. Concretely, it's better. But just in principle, if knight f3 is working, you would prefer. To play it, castles, castles, e5. Okay, now this is puzzling. I don't understand this move. Am I missing something? Um. What happens if you take? Well, he can... Nothing, he just wants to trade the queen. He just gave me a pawn. I mean, he will get it back, but he will lose some time. So, for example, okay, let's say he trades queen. So, first of all, you get to develop the rook, yeah? Uh, with tempo now knight g4 and he will get the pawn i don't see how you can defend it however you have this sneaky little move yeah yeah and, i like uh, that move yeah and you're attacking his bishop you're attacking the pawn on c7 and uh it looks really good for white and i just mentioned that regardless to this move uh in this particular sequence uh, if you don't see anything special, you can always play e6 and ruin his pawn structure. Yeah, just give him the pawn back. Yeah, I was. I might have even been looking at something like that. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And uh, just as an example, takes, 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 and I think you can take on c7. But oh no, f2 might be hanging. Okay, so maybe I'll play h3, and it's generally better for white. Yeah, because this pawn is weak. Yeah. And you might get the c7 pawn as well so at some point. Okay, so bishop g3. Uh, is slightly, uh, let's say, playing into his hands. It's not bad, but uh, he gave you a gift, yeah? So now he takes d4, knight takes d4. And also here there's something I'm not too sure about. He, you're going to get an isolated pawn, yeah? Yeah. Regardless of what you do. And certainly appears to be the case, yeah. Because yeah. if you trade everything down, it just ends up with that one pawn on yeah, you d4. Will, you will not lose a pawn, but you will get an isolated pawn. So the question here is in which order? Do you take with the pawn, or exchange a knight first, or exchange the queens as well, and then take with the pawn? I but, think I did the, the, the knight first, but I'm not sure. Yeah, so I'll, I'll say something general about uh, this kind of uh, isolated pawn. It doesn't matter if it's an isolated queenside pawn, or a kingside pawn. In both cases, uh, it's a weakness from strategical point of view. But what you get in exchange is called uh, some more potential for initiative. So and dynamic play. I will not go to all the details, but um, just trust me on this one. If you decide with the isolated pawn, you want to attack, and he wants to exchange pieces. That's the general rule. So now that you know it, you can tell me what's the right move. You want to attack and he wants to exchange pieces. So you want to have as many pieces on the board as possible. So you would take with the pawn then. Exactly. So exchanging okay. the knights is like uh, strategically considered to be in his favor. And okay. The, and the queens even more. 
His dream right. is to get an endgame. So now e takes d4. And bishop takes e3. Okay, he's following the rule of uh, exchanging pieces. But he does two bad things. One of them is fixing your pawns. <laughs> Pretty the other one is not respecting the bish. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Disrespecting the bish is a, is a sin. That's, that's I made a I made a T-shirt with that with that with that um, with a slogan, bishop and then yeah. with the words, yeah. I don't know if you saw that, but I I, I saw it as a like a, at the beginning of the previous video that uh, of ours that you put. Yeah, yeah, it was really nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love this uh, <laughs> T-shirt. I'd love to to have one uh, someday. And, send uh, me your uh, send me your address afterwards, and I'll send you one. Then. All right, all right. That's why I'm doing these streams. I want free t-shirts. So, <laughs> <laughs> we take c3, uh, knight e4. And, uh, so he's attack, attacking the c-pawn there? Yeah. And the, and the bish. So, he's attacking your bishop and c3 is hanging, right? Yep. Or, or is it protected by a knight here? Uh, it's not, it's not, it's hanging. It's, it's hanging, yeah. The knight took here earlier, yeah. So it's gone. I think I went to queen to queen to d3 here to to prevent the pawns from being doubled up. Yeah, so now you played queen d3. It's a good idea. You develop and you have a you know, like you protect and you have a tempo on the knight. Okay, and he played bishop f5. Ah, but this might be a little bit annoying. So you had to foresee this bishop f5 idea which might I did not. No. Yeah, so you kind of lost the tempo without uh, noticing. Yeah. I missed it as well. So let's think what would be a better move here. So he wants to take. What about um, queen to f3? Hmm. Queen to f3. Looks like a good idea. It's the same idea, just to protect that pawn and then, you know, prevent Attacking my... The knight, protecting the pawn yeah. on c3. Yeah, looks decent. But hmm, what can he play here? Do you have a suggestion for a move for him? I think he would play either taking or knight d6. And in both cases, queen f3 is, is a good move. Another move that comes to mind is uh, something like... I'm not sure it's it's making sense, but yeah, queen c2. I think it's good. Because the same idea like in the game, but only now after bishop f5 you can go bishop d3. Oh, you know why queen f queen f queen f three doesn't work because he has a fork with the with oh, the. Oh right, the, I missed it. I missed it. The there. Yeah. You got it. So that's no good. You managed to to find a move that everyone missed. No that's bueno. Good. I'm proud. Not good. Yeah. So uh, took, took us took us about five minutes, but we got there eventually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this is a fork. So queen f three is a mistake. So now ninety four. So queen c2 is probably uh, a good move because now. But he still, but he still has the the bishop um, bishop to f5 there, right? Yeah, but now the point is bishop d3 and there is a pin. Uh, okay, and, uh, I see. I mean, it's not winning or anything, but at least uh, you don't lose the tempo. So uh, Eric... now he do, he would yeah him taking him taking that bishop would be real bad in that spot. Yeah, it's it's not necessarily with the, with the bad. I and... think it's it's okay. It's just an equal position protecting so, oh yeah you're right, you're right so yeah. i would just take he takes i take and it's more or less equal okay so yeah. queen c2 is an okay move uh another interesting idea is bishop d3 by the way immediately just give him the pawn kind of because now if he takes then queen c2 also hits uh, h7 okay all right okay and maybe after he moves then this guy will be hanging yeah so yeah Okay, so queen d3 is probably slight inaccuracy, and but now you noticed his uh, threat, so you want to go queen e3, most central square. That's good. Um, yeah, but yeah, this is this is bad for me, right? Because the rook rook to e8. E yeah, down I would there prefer to put scary. the queen to on f3 now because you attack the bishop, so he doesn't have time for for this fork. I mean, he does, oh, but uh, you don't lose a lot. You, you take, he takes the bishop, it's more or less okay, yeah? Yeah, okay. So, queen f3 is uh, probably more precise, and now if he goes back with the bishop, 
you can simply move rook to d1 not sure which let's put this one yeah it feels more or less fine for you um yeah i don't see any way he can exploit it i like white's chances here so queen e3 is probably slightly inaccurate but not nothing dramatic yeah probably not yeah. even worth mentioning so c6 now um I'm not sure what he was thinking there with that one. Yeah. I it doesn't know. really do much. <clears throat> Maybe he wants to develop his queen somewhere like here. Yeah. I okay. guess. But yeah, it's it is not very quick. I would definitely recommend rookie eight with tempo, so to speak, yeah. Yeah, that would have sucked. Yeah. So C six, no bishop e five. Why? I guess you want to, to, to preserve your bishop on the board, yeah? Yeah, keep my bishop on the board, and then he obviously he can't push on F, F6. And uh, I also didn't... Maybe I was thinking about yeah, rook to E8 down there. And, for those who don't see, it's illegal. Yeah, you can't do that because it would open up a check there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it looks like a good move. Centralize your bishop, keep it on the board. Looks uh, very nice. Now he played B5. Uh, kind of trying to justify this previous move, but it's also slightly weakening. Now this pawn is a little bit uh, unprotected. Right, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, bishop b3 looks good. a5, once again, he wants to continue. I like a4 here for white. To try and uh, block his pawns and maybe later have the option to take. Yeah. Not too quickly. Uh, but a3 is also fine. You anticipated his idea. Yeah, I just Four. wanted to stay on that diagonal. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. This diagonal is, is very nice. It also helps secure this bishop here. So, as we mentioned, we not, don't allow f6 for the moment. So now he renewed the idea of f6 with king h8. And once again, he doesn't really care about developing too much. He should have played rook e8 for so many moves, and uh, now it's also not possible anymore because f7 will be hanging. Yeah. So, yeah, he has no big threats and uh, no real ideas. So, what do you think? Like, I see you played f3, but uh, how do you evaluate your position here? Um, I liked my position. I liked having the two two bishops on these diagonals. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt I felt pretty good about my spot right here. Yeah. Um, Me too. As All far right. as the best, the best move, I don't, I don't know. F three is F three not a good move? <coughs> Sorry, it's. Uh, I mean, thank you. Bless now, you. <laughs> uh, rook to e one would be a developing move that uh, I don't mind making, but F three doesn't strike me as bad. So, I mean, his knight has to to commit to some square, and uh, he's getting. Uh, uh, away from the center, so it should be good for you. Knight yeah. five. H4 is a little bit, uh, um, I would say, double-edged, because uh, it opens up your king a little bit, yeah? Yeah, I was just, I don't know why, I just smelled blood in the water, and I just wanted to start attacking at this point. I mean, it, it, it is possible, but not G4 later. H4, 96, maybe now H5, or something like this, hinting at H6, yeah? And just to, so yeah. I want you to, to notice that if he plays h6, you have queen takes h6. Oh, yeah. That would have been nice. Yeah. So this might be a nice idea. And h6 next. I, I think I like it a little bit more. And exploiting his king being on h8. So g4. Okay, it looks nice. But it's a little bit... No, but wait. His knight is on e6, so his bishop is trapped. No, it's not that bad. <laughs> I didn't see it was trapped. I just trusted you. I just well, it's not trapped because he can go to c two. Well, it it's very close. Yeah, yeah, it's not trapped. You're right. He has bishop b three later because of the a yeah. four pawn. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So bishop c two is definitely a move he should have played, but yeah, he didn't see it. So oh, he didn't play that. I didn't. I don't remember. Yeah, he took. He took queen h four. And now, okay, it should be winning for white. You have the pair of bishops. Yeah, at this point, it, it looked a little kind of scary with my king being so open, but I felt like I was going to be fine. Yeah. 
yeah. had enough pieces to defend. Exactly. You have more pieces simply on the king's side and on the board in general. <laughs> so <laughs> now rook f2 looks like a very nice move. You want to go rook h2 or rook g2 later. But yeah. do you allow him to take? Yeah, you, you let him take on g4. Because yeah, I figured it'd be fine because I had so many pieces bearing down yeah, on that. Yeah, and also on the next move you can take the knight and then go bishop g7. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking there. Nice. So f6, rook h2. Oh, f6 is a smart move on his side. Is a knight on e6 hanging? I think it is. It is, yeah. Hmm, interesting. I wonder... Yeah, I think you can exploit it by playing bishop g3. Yeah? Because now the queen is also attacking the knight. So if he goes... But queen, once, the queen, once the queen takes pawn, then he, she'll be protecting the knight. But uh, I think I have two attackers. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I think bishop g3 would have been winning here. A second piece. So rook h2. Uh, queen g4. Yeah, now, unfortunately, the bishop is still hanging. So you don't have time to... To grab on e6 yet but you get bishop d6 this is nice so now these two are two pieces are hanging yeah yeah so you get at least an exchange however it's still a little bit complicated okay because there is a pin yeah bishop takes e6 rook a d8 so just just to quickly mention if anyone missed uh, bishop g3 instead of rook h2 here was winning on the spot you get the second piece and it's basically game over so yeah. probably rook h2 was not precise, but again, it's not losing or anything. Yeah, just not winning when you have a chance is not ruining anything in particular. Right. So rook yeah. f8, bishop e6, rook a d8. Okay, bishop c5 makes a lot of sense. Oh, this 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 was a thirty-minute game actually. Wow. So yeah. I, I wonder that. how they have the guts to give up pieces when you have so much time on the clock. Yeah, it wasn't like there was no time pressure or anything, so... Yeah, and now... It looks like, a, it looks like it's just a miscalculation. Yeah. Okay, now I'm not sure I see the position well, but if if I do, then I think win g3 would make sense, because you're kind of getting away from the pin, and threatening mate, and protecting right. d6, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like... And then after he, he responds, you can move the bishop away, and... Uh, and you will be out of all the all the tricks. Yeah. Uh, so bishop c5, of course, looks fine, but just queen g3 is a little bit more uh, direct, I would say. And also bishop c7, just to attack this rook. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Where would uh, he even go there? Have no, to but go actually, to like now a, he might a, have rook a. d7. There's a pin. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. He yes. goes here. So, okay, bishop c5 looks good. Uh, queen d5 looks like the weirdest move I've seen today. <laughs> Give him yeah, the I queen. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Just to like, you know, whenever my opponents make such moves, I imagine their face like uh, so proud of themselves. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and like, I imagine Fucking a sound like, <laughs> like this kind of <laughs> laugh. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't look very enticing for, for, for his heart was in the right place i think at this point it's like it happens in chess sometimes where you just have this meltdown where one bad move leads leads to an, a worse one which leads to an even worse one yeah mistakes i think that's what usually come in paris that's true yeah and by the way i still like the idea of ah you played it actually queen g3 awesome yeah i thought you would take the queen and be happy about uh, about exchanging but you are already uh, don't care about such uh, minor issues as exchanging no. queens. You want to go for the throat. That's good. Queen g3 is a fantastic move. You get away from the pin, create a double threat. I think he can still play queen g5, but it's obviously game over. And this is a better version of the trade because his pawn is quite weak. So just a quick uh, example. You can play bishop f7 and take it on the next move, yeah? Yeah. And now he played rook takes e6 and let you finish with mate. So yeah. nicely done. Well. So far you played relatively well, I would say, and uh, all the games ended with you mating your opponent. So what can a person ask for, yeah? 
I don't know. Yeah, not terrible. Not, not yeah. terrible. All right, let me let me talk to my stream real quick. I'll be right back. We'll do uh, we'll do one more after this. We'll okay. try and get it done and get it done in about thirty minutes. Okay.